in certain parts of Africa where we have erratic rainfall, we have limited options of sustainable land use. Over millennia, nature has developed and evolved a spectrum of species that have naturalized in those particular harsh environments. We as humans are recent newcomers to the stage. We've come in into a pretty balanced environment and we're now changing things. We're changing things rapidly. I consider it a privilege to have been born and raised out in the wilds of Southeast Zimbabwe. I found from a very young age an interest in the outdoors, you know, sort of wandering around hunting rats and squirrels and birds, etc. Initial interest was in wildlife and conservation. Man has the ability to determine whether there is no wildlife or whether there is a compromise. At the end of the day, man will make that decision. What we are trying to do is we're trying to mesh a traditionally sustainable form of land use with human development. And to do that, you have to bring communities on board. They need to be involved in that land use planning. And when we as human beings are prepared to share the water out of the same river, when we are prepared to share the shade of the same baobab tree with an elephant, the future of that elephant is a lot safer than if that human being says, that water and that tree is more valuable to me without you. So we've got to bring people on board, otherwise I don't see a long-term future in terms of, of human survival, because at the end of the day, we'll destroy ourselves. <laughs> what we are trying to do is we're trying to mesh a traditionally sustainable form of land use with human development. The issue of human population growth versus available resources, etc., is this continent's greatest challenge at the moment and, and it's, there's no easy solution to it. Wildlife is something that in some areas is still very dangerous in terms of making long-term land use decisions. But at the end of the day, if wildlife can contribute to the livelihoods of people so that the people will adopt that species as part of their system, we are achieving sustainable conservation and this program has gone a long way down the road to do just that. There are five communities around the park and to be able to take this model and work with the others and over time end up with a park that has got a robust community program all the way around to me would be the strongest message to not only other areas in Zimbabwe but for the region as a whole.